So Adam, I'm going to skip to my third story, which is our boldest predictions for 2024 from PC Gamer by Jody McGregor, uh, contributed by Ted Litchfield, Wes Fenlon, Christopher Livingston, Tyler Wilde, and Lauren Morton, published one day ago. Please check out the full article on PC Gamer and support them. But we do need to support our digital gaming publication. I'm going to go through these predictions. I'm going to get the guys' takes on this. I'll give you my quick take as well. And the very first prediction, which relates to why I wanted to start this story first, is relates to what the guys were talking about, which is bigger worlds. And the, the, the very first prediction is planet-sized planets are the new hotness. And I disagree with this. Like, I don't want bigger gaming worlds. I don't want to be able to go to other planets and land and explore. And it, it's not a thing, but I think definitely gaming is heading this way, unfortunately for me anyway. But I think Antoine and Adam perhaps like this sort of stuff. So let's go with Antoine first. Adam, Antoine, what's your take on this? Do you think there's going to be bigger, more expansive gaming worlds in 2024? We already had that. Oh, it's like a world or regions auto-generated because when you say different planets, it's different. It's just a different. It's just a new name for different region, right? Was it Morrowind, which was the size of the US almost because uh, of the size of the map? Skyrim also has the size of the map, which is insanely big. So I don't think it's gonna get bigger. I just if it get as big, or you don't necessarily need a big world, right? You just need a world which is well populated, balanced. That's a bit of the critics that I has I had with uh, the, the latest so Tears of the Kingdom. You retake the same map as before, so it's really big, right? But you have entire region where there's just nothing basically. You just walk around, and yes, it's for the ambience, the atmosphere. You need to have some wildlife and some nothingness, right? Because if I go outside and it's Canada here between Montreal and Ottawa, you have two hours of basically not bad, right? Forest and sweet cornfields. But I'm playing a video game to escape reality. So I want something interesting quickly. I don't want to wait a long time before something interesting happens. I don't think bigger is better. I just say balanced is better. You want to do something big? As long as it's well balanced, it's fine. Uh, if it's procedural, I'm, I'm never a big fan of procedural things, but maybe I'm just strong. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, Eve, Eve Online. Can you see something bigger than that? That's the biggest game ever. And uh, there's a big community on it who love it. So you can do some great thing, big. It's the same as the rest. You just have to do it well. <laughs> That's it. Adam, what about you? I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm, I think this is a good thing. I think that this is, uh, I, I don't think it's good for games like, say, Starfield or a Final Fantasy or a Skyrim or any of those. I don't think it's good for those games because those games are very focused in their story and their scope. And so I think it's a bad idea for that. But I think that this is a good opportunity to open up a new genre of game, the exploration game or the exploration genre which I think like games like say No Man's Sky, that's part of the thrill, right? Is going out and just expanding and creating bases and exploring new things. And I think that having a planet-sized game could open up a lot for that. The example that they have here in the article is uh, Light No Fire, which is the new game by, was it Hello Games, the No Man's Sky studio. And then the whole point is that you're in this world occupied by dragons, and it's not about a story. It's not about a quest to save the world or anything. It's about exploring this world and going out and finding dragons and taming them. And and I think that I think it's good in that it could create an, or like for instance a game like Elite Dangerous that they mention here as well. These games are about they're not about the story. They're about the exploration. They're about the journey. And I think for that genre, I think that this is actually a great idea. I think this is really cool. You could have. Uh, a bunch of people exploring the world together and sailing from continent to continent. And I think, yeah, for that style of game, I think this is a good thing. I Again, I don't think it's good for every genre, but I do think that there are genres where this is a, could be a very wonderful thing. Yeah, but I agree completely with you. Subdotica, for instance, it's exactly it. Sandbox games. I'm playing with my son on an early access game. It's Sunken Land, an arc, but underwater or something. You're right, as long as you play with other people and you keep it interesting. Because if it's a solo game, problem is that you lose interest quite quickly. There's not a strong red string to, to drive you through the game. I would be very interested at first 
and then I think I would just lose my interest quite quick after that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the Minecraft thing, right? Minecraft, if we probably took every single Minecraft world that's ever been created, I'm sure oh you've probably God. got a planet sized world if you put them all together. And but but people, but people still love Minecraft because you can go in and you can do creative things and, and that sort of thing. And I think that's the appeal of these planet sized games.